Hi everybody, I hope you're doing great. I've got an awesome 60 minute session I'm doing today for a client, distance, energy healing, psychic wisdom, are gonna be at the root of this whole experience. We're gonna be offering, it's kind of, okay, so your scenario is so uh, detailed, so very interesting. Um, it's about a complicated relationship situation. You're eight months pregnant. You're now making the choice to close the door on that relationship, which is toxic. Um, but you're kind of conflicted because it is it toxic? Am I like, wh who am I? Who is he? Um, but the truth is there's so much dishonesty and it's heartbreaking. It's despairing and enough is enough. And so your, your only choice right now is to truly close the door and proceed as a single mother to give birth to this baby. And obviously you're in a real emotional pickle, pickle with yourself, a pickle with your, your vision of the future and what you sought to experience when having this baby is a, is a beautiful marriage, long-term, um, you know, beautiful life story, make, have a family, all that good stuff. You also shared a lot about the background history here with him, which is a pretty incredible story. It takes a great deal of courage to be able to conquer his um, drug addiction. Um, it, when you met, like it, it was like he was just swooning you off your feet. He seemed to be such an incredible man and like a no brainer that this was it, right? But it's turned into a lot of what you describe as covert narcissism it's been so hard on you. And this is a very complicated place for you to be in. So <laughs> you shared like such an amazing story with me. I wanted to give people a taste of what you offered here. Um, so we could dive in and really help you right now. So the door's kind of open. What is the most um, profound wisdom healing I can share to help you in all of this? Because when you're in the midst of all this, you're inhaling and exhaling time, who you once were, who you are now, you're having a baby, what the future looks like, is it me, is it him, should I hold out, what's, you know, all this, you wanted to heal generational curses in the family, you know, it's like so much happening. It's an emotionally devastating time. So what is the most profound way that we can really tackle this knot um, of a situation and turn it into something smooth and sleek, empowering, um, exciting, the adventures of life, um, everything happens for all the right reasons. I know it's easy to say that, still have to go through the living part of everything happens for all the right reasons, um, but I'm going to put it out to the universe here. And we'll, we'll see what echoes back. So this session is going to be devoted to really helping you as a first-time mother um, with this exciting journey of getting to be a mother and have a baby, which is really, really special. And so no matter what happens, it's all about love. And this baby is here for you too. This baby has come at all the, the, the perfect time. So it's not just you alone trying to conquer the world of a difficult situation. Believe it or not, the, the baby is actually going to help you with the conquering. Um, even though they're very demanding, they're very needy, they're very loving. Okay, so this child is going to just love you completely. Okay, it is here as a, as a heroic part of your life story as well as his life story. So um, only time will tell, right? How this is all, the story is going to unfold. But you're in the story <laughs> and this child is in the story and this father is in the story and your history is in the story. <laughs> Everything is in the story, which makes it a good story, okay? You're gonna get through this. Thank you for sharing the, your situation with me, giving me an opportunity to help you and then give people a taste of the story and actually we're gonna navigate this with the spirit realm and we're gonna we're gonna learn some stuff. It's gonna be beautiful, okay? So all of us watching here, we love you, we're supporting you, we understand, and it is very confusing. So we wanna send love to everybody, including the father, including your family, and because you've even mentioned how the family loves him and they don't really know what you know. And so this is even hard for you. It's just so many sides to the story and I, I understand it. So giving you a really big hug. 
And I want to thank you so much for booking this session. It is so good to connect with you today. So good to do this for you today. All right, I'm going to relax now, get in the zone here. So based on everything we know and this clip of, of a, um, you know, just an, a sample of the bigger picture of all the details, um, I'm going to close my eyes, put out to the universe, and we'll see what echoes back to really help you, lift you out of the mud and really help you find your strength. And one of the keywords you used too was about um, you really want to heal your femininity, um, really heal the, um, the female side. You were even mentioning dreams with Mother Mary. Um, there, there was so much you shared. Um, so we can tap into the feminine energies to support you as well. <sighs> okay. So I'm getting grounded here. <sighs> getting in the zone. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is actually go to you. You're number one here. And as I help you, we're then helping the baby. We're helping. It's the domino effect event. So you're number one in my viewpoint. Okay, the first thing that when I look at you, there seems to be very sharp objects. So let's say you're standing at the center of a gray area. <laughs> It looks like the ultimate fog. So the fog is like a gentle fist slowly suffocating you, okay? So we have gentle fog slowly suffocating you. Now, just outside, maybe six feet, um, there's all these like razor blade like, uh, maybe thin little grass blades that are as sharp as razor blades, and they're like whack, 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 cutty, okay? Cutty, because there's like millions of them, and I'm like, like I'm getting weed whacked here and they particularly slice at my eyes so this might be a protective energy field makes sense why but it's also like your emotional despair that is communicating with the outer world um, it's like your aura is in a lot of pain um, this is this this isn't hurt me by any means so naturally we're gonna calm everything down but I'm just going to pause for starters. So this is my, this is what it looks like. This is the introduction. You're number one. <laughs> All right. <laughs> now I'm going to be silent. Let's see what the next step is. They're people. They're fingers pointing. Um, these grass blades are actually, when I touch one of them, they're very sharp. They're like little swords, little razor blades, super sharp. And so I just grab one and I look and it's a person and there's like million people and they're, they're actually lying down and their heads are facing towards me. So they're like bodies of people lying, um, pointing, like finger pointing at me. They all seem to be dead. They represent, these are people that are in a coffin and their bodies are lying in the coffin. We remove the coffin and they're just like heads pointing at me. There's a million of them and they're like fingers pointing, but then they merge into the, the appearance of like sharp swords. And now that I see them as people, all the sharpness kind of withers away. And now I just have these dead people here. <laughs> I'm supposed to use this language. I don't usually like to tell, like use the language dead people, uh, but that's what they are. Okay. I want to call them ancestors, but I want to, I want to honor their representation as um, the life cycle. So the life cycle is a beautiful thing. They're the representation of humans that have lived and died here. They represent ancestors. But the language I'm to work with is they are dead people, okay? So it's not a nice language about it. Okay, that's your hurt. That's your pain. That's um, They're all falling to the ground now. Like pff, everything falls to the ground. 
And so there's just a bunch of dead people on the ground um, around you, almost like they represent very small logs, many of them. And you're like the witch getting burned at the stake in the center. But um, they're, they're in a ring outside, like six feet outside yourself are dead bodies, okay? Of the death of many family members and the life cycle of your bloodline, okay? And they all start to represent meaningless logs, light the fire and burn you alive, okay? So we're really getting a flavor for your agony. Um, so your energy field speaks for what you're going through. And so we're one step at a time. We're navigating it, okay? So this is how we shift energy from <laughs> whiplashing <laughs> uh, grass blades, you know, one thing at a time we work through it. Okay. My goal is to get to you in the center, but you're not, um, like I have to honor the aura. I have to honor the protective energy field. And then we learn stuff. So I'm honoring the path to you, not by just ignoring it and then just project myself to you but actually honoring it and moving through it is then honoring you and your story and your experience and also teaching you about what your energy is speaking like okay you don't have to lasso yourself and get a handle on this because sometimes we go through suffering and we release a lot of it's like are the pain across a timeline landscape of a timeline it's not just this life it's many lives so when we go through traumatizing events that are you could call this you know the, the ultimate despair you know to become a mother and to be faced with the unfathomable it's like a cruel um twist to your soul's meaning your existence the meaning of life the meaning of being a mother the meaning of it all you know it's just like a cruel twist of reality and so it releases a lot of despair that could be the same voice of screaming and releasing of the pain of the mother across the landscape of time that's not just this lifetime but many lifetimes so through the gift of this suffering in this life, you're actually able to heal aspects of yourself that have gone through the same window of experience. So you are healing a generational curse, so to speak, for your own lineage of your own soul's growth and development, but also for women. It's like my guides are like, but how is the screaming mother healing the screaming mother? by participating like actually becoming one with the suffering to know thy suffering and then to actually nurture if you can somehow some way but you have to get into the hole you can't just be like hey how's it going down there Whew. yeah backing up walking away from the hole <laughs> i want nothing to do with that i don't even want to know what that's like myself so i'm not gonna go there no you're going into the hole okay of the suffering of the mother okay where you can actually reach all the other suffering mothers across the landscape of time then heal the generational curses because you became the learning but you can bring the mother mary to all of her children which is you are mother mary's child we're all the souls of the divine goddess right and the divine masculine too, like the divine God and goddess energies, right? We're all children of that energy. It's really cool. It's really nice. And Mother Mary's a representation of that. It's like Mother God actually became a human and we called her Mother Mary. But guess what? All mothers are representations of Mother Mary, our representation of the Mother Goddess, like, which is so cool. But we don't usually think like that, you know? So you are Mother Mary. That's really special. And you are, are experiencing the path of the mother and you know the mother's pain. And this is the brutal pain. But you can also reach the pain then more directly. Not indirectly, but directly. By knowing what it's like and actually being a helping hand to heal the nur and nurture the landscape of time. Okay, So all those who struggled with this and suffered with this, your voice can scream right along with them or you can do the opposite. Say, you know what? I'm going to trust in this path. 
I'm going to be grateful I'm pregnant. I'm going to be grateful for the amazing soul that is my son. I'm going to be grateful to be a representation of Mother Mary. I'm going to be grateful for all this, and I'm not going to let it twist me. I'm not going to let it tell me I should be angry, or I should be sad, or I should be defeated, or I should be... I'm going to be me, the me I, I am. The me I've gotten to know my whole life, I'm going to be me. And that me is going to be an awesome mother. Even if this doesn't add up, it's not the equation that re I related to my whole life. The equation I related to is I find this amazing companion. We have a child together. We raise the child together. That is my equation, right? Now you're in like this anti-equation. And it's confusing because it doesn't me mesh with the equation. So... You need, this is, this is a lot of love and it's to turn your pain inside out and comfort you with your own Mother Mary's sight, your own Mother Mary's pure radiance. It's like you are radiance. And so you can let what's out there in and just like drink the poison and let it mess you up. Or you can own that this is the equation, not as you wanted it to be, but as it is. And maybe this is the one that you wanted all along. You just don't know how you could have possibly wanted this, but now you're going into the rabbit hole. You understand this pain of the mother, but gosh darn it, you're going to be the best darn mom this world's ever known. Because you know yourself, you know what your joy is, you know what your love is, you know who you are. And you're going to work with that because that's your truth. The pain isn't your truth. It's just an idea of truth. It's just part of the process. And you choose it or you just say, nah, nah, I'm not going to be the pain. I'm going to be the radiance. That's what I want to be. And now the baby's here to help you and to love you no matter what. It's not going to be um, ABC, okay? We just want it to be ABC. There's the alphabet. Know what I'm working with. This is going to be randomizer time okay but you're smart and you're clever and you're loving and you've got what it takes this is exactly as it's meant to be okay there's a lot of exhaustion and shaking going on here and uh i i feel like i want to collapse that tells me you've been um, holding it together upholding the sort of pain um aura upholding the pain aura because it's been painful um, and so now that you're dropping the pain aura you're kind of collapsing on the ground with exhaustion you're trying to hold the world on your back really and and try to figure out how how to navigate your responsibility to uphold the most mature and admirable sense of responsibility and the conflict of shutting the father out, but the father shut himself out. You've been working on this for a few years. The beginning was great. It's snowballing into something that's toxic. It's not honest. You're sensing that you're seeing that. You're having to do the most painful thing possible. Close the door on someone who closed the door on themselves because they can't figure out how to conquer this thing right now. So you're making a decision that you feel is in the best interest of yourself and the baby. That's all you can do right now. ABC is going to get kind of randomized, okay? But you, you can trust in your own heart and just do the best that you can. I'm telling you... These children, this baby of yours is going to be very clever, is going to be very loving. And don't worry about um, uh, this whole thing is messing up this, you know, my beautiful child before it's even born. Um, don't think like that. This child is really smart and really clever and knows how to navigate this. So see that. You're giving birth to a child that is... Uh, powerful navigator here powerful heart powerful spirit of love is perceptive and clever and is going to bring so much joy to your life no matter the circumstances and you're gonna see that year after year after year you're going to see that more and more clearly so see that in the child 
don't see the child as now somehow screwed up because of a screwed up situation. That's not true. And this situation isn't screwed up because it was divine. So you've got to start seeing it with that clever perceptiveness. This situation is divine. This child is divine. I'm divine. The father is divine. If this is balance, it's not, not my idea of balance, but if this is somehow balance, what is love? And then who am I in this? And how can I be love in this? And how can I be a firm representation of harmony despite disharmony? And whatever I think and perceive disharmony as, what can I do and be as love? And I want to raise my, the, it's almost like your, your heart has got volume. And the volume is either in disarray or it's in radiance. And so you can choose disarray because it's hard to go down into the hole and be amongst the, the, the mothers that are like crying um, across the landscape of time. It's hard to do that. But now you're getting a message from the divine itself to help you cleanse your, it's like your glasses, you know, we just wipe off the lenses and it's like, I've been looking through a gray area full of sharp razor blades and dis dead people that are logs now burning me like a witch at the stake or something. But I'm actually like a Mother Mary of love and harmony that's, that's doing the best I can to work through the randomizer alphabet and choose a firm grounded stance on what love means to you, right? So you can be that for your child and you can be that for this whole your family for every single thing. It's not about holding the world upon your shoulders and it's your responsibility. Yeah, you have to take responsibility. Um, but there's a comfort in just easing into being who you are familiar with, which is happy, smart, witty, um, an open heart, um, having faith and trust in the midst of all of this, bringing the, the light into all of this. It's interesting because you, you mentioned in your goals that you've been working with women who um, are teaching you a lot about the divine feminine and um, how to have, you know, a balanced uh, divine feminine relationship and a divine masculine. Like it's, it's women's roles and um, it's pretty interesting stuff. Uh, I really liked what you shared about that. And here you are a woman becoming a mother and learning through a kaleidoscope of conflict that you actually are going to be incredible master teacher because you've been there, done that. You didn't look from the outside in, you actually dove in. And now you're a master teacher. You're going to learn so much and you might actually grow into being a woman who helps women. That could be what this whole thing is all about and what not a perfect schoolroom than the worst case scenario. So you can hate it. Or you can embrace it because what else are you going to do? That's the whole thing about fear, you know? It's like the eye roll. Like, why is this my reality? I hate this reality. This reality sucks. I, I resist it. I deny it. I renounce it. I scrutinize it. I put a wall between me and it. But you still have to live in it. You know? And so don't, don't let it be your pain. It's like, I'm not, I don't need to be afraid of this. I don't want to be afraid of this. I want to get to know my son. I'm going to figure out the randomizer ABCs. I'm going to love myself. I'm going to love my son. I'm going to love the father at whatever distance that, that is appropriate, okay? Because it, it sometimes when we think about, we, we always want to make sure that we're not the bad guy. Um, we're seeing a lot of things that you're drinking kind of the toxic poison and trying to um, neutralize it and bring harmony and voice and there's a back and forth exchange and there's time involved and what does it take you know to endure this but there's a lot of uh, from your story it's like you have to remember that you're it's like this person also has to take responsibility for the toxicity that they have to empathically understand that they're creating they're like putting this as the birthday cake in the oven and then you're both eating it and it's full of worms or something 
and you're trying to show, hey, I don't want worms in my birthday cake. These are the worms that I'm seeing. Can we please remove them and really grow this bond? It's not happening. They're just making more worms. So they're closing the door on themselves. And it takes ridiculous courage to actually do that coming from a place of what you value in a relationship, what you sought um, to experience, the loyalty that you, you admire, like you want that. It's familiar to you. So this is really crushing everything that is more in your moral code as a soul. It goes against the grain of all ethics. So that's part of the complicated algorithm here that gives you permission to enter into a complicated rabbit hole to help women by experiencing women's pain. But you don't have to be screaming anymore. You can be actually in gratitude. Now fear has got nothing on you. You see how fear works? It's like the minute that you stop pushing it away and the minute you pull it in and hug it and say, thank you for being my worst nightmare, I'm actually going to make something of this. It's like when life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. That's exactly the same thing. It's like this sucks, but it doesn't. I'm not going to say that. I'm going to say this is perfect. This is amazing. This is good. Come on in here, nightmare. Let me give you a hug. Let me thank you for this. I am going to learn so much because of this and I'm going to triumph and I'm going to glow and I'm going to help people. I'm going to help myself. I'm going to raise an amazing child and I'm so grateful for this. So there's a lot of the energy that's just like rushing in like waterfalls, like moving water, rushing and rushing in for you. Like this message you could listen to anytime you're having a, a bad day, okay? Just to give you the breath again, just to give you the perspective again, just to bring it on in and get you back into balance, you know, with the harmony, with the radiance, that good stuff, you know? All right. All right, so ha, we're gonna go back to where we started or at least where we left off on where we started. So I'm standing out here. There's like a lot of dead people like logs on the ground. There's still a gray area, you're still in the center. Man, I feel like I'd mentioned that it's almost like you've been upholding this like aura of pain and now it's lightening up, it's thinning out, it's reconsidering and you're collapsing. So it's like kind of shaky, like um, maybe the way you feel if you're really hungry and you need a Snicker bar or something <laughs> like the commercials, you're just like, it's like. I don't know, maybe a lack of sugar or something. Um, you just feel shaky and just like collapsing. So that's, that's what I feel right now. And that's what you're emitting right now. But you're still kind of holding on to the gray. All right, this is going to be a little bit difficult. Ugh. I'm going to continue to help you with the shakiness. So it's going to make me feel a bit shaky. Um, and I'm actually crossing a line, which is the ring of dead people logs. I'm crossing that line and I'm walking into the gray area and this is creepy. This is like Halloween style, scary movie style, um, uh, dead trees, basically a dead forest. I uh, feel like there's werewolves amidst um, that are going to attack and then consume me while I'm still alive. I don't get to turn into a werewolf. No, I'm going to actually be a lit like a carcass that's being eaten while I'm screaming and asking it, begging it to stop, and then having to somehow cope with dying like this. So it's it's creepy like this. It's not good like this. Okay. It's hard to breathe. There seems to be like dark, evil, cursed sorcerers and uh, cursed people, glowing red eyes, mages that do dark things, um, vampires. <clears throat> bad stuff, okay? It's still like shaky, man. <sighs> I'm gonna plant roots in this horrible world because this horrible world needs me. So why would I plant roots in this, this scene of horrible things? Because I am strong enough to be the one thing that all these horrible things don't want to heal them. 
or to guide them in a way that they'll have to renounce something of their darkness. And I become like a tree of light. And I take ownership of that which I am. And this is you. You are taking ownership of that which you are. And you are a very firm and stubborn, um, grounded, amazing, one of a kind, super tree of light that is planting roots in a bad world, you could say. All right. It's a bad, toxic, nightmare, eat you alive kind of vampire, dead tree, nothing grows here, toxic, awful world. Okay. People transform into monsters. Monsters eat you. You're begging for them to stop. They don't stop. You have to face this terrible death. Like this is the horrible world that you're going to be planting roots in because you're not a werewolf. You're not a vampire. You're not a dead tree. You're not um, any of the things that you're choosing to feel like you're a victim, um, dying a terrible death. Um, none of those things are true. And anything about the world that is a bad world um, needs you to be your unique, one-of-a-kind, super bright, awesome tree. So they can find that in their own reflection if they choose to. You don't have to force people to be good. What is good? It's caring about the well-being of themselves, the well-being of others, the well-being of the world, which creates more well-being for all its harmony, as all it is. It's illuminating harmony. They're the opportunity for others to grab the fruit off the tree that provides them harmony because people are starving for it. And you actually know the recipe for harmony. You're avoiding being the harmony that you are and now becoming the eaten alive victim, which isn't true. That's not, not what you are at all. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, you don't get to be the victim this time. <laughs> it's like kind of cool that you get to be the one and only strong standing tree, kind of lonely in a way. But you have yourself and my, my God, yourself is freaking awesome and worth having. And maybe that's all you know right now is that you have yourself right now and you and yourself can navigate this thing. And for starters, you got to plant roots in this awful world and the way things are and get grounded into the ground here. And it's not toxic because it's got you and you're not toxic. And as you get grounded, you're going to get clarity, okay? So you're growing and you're growing strong and you're growing bright and radiant. The world can do what it wants. Like it can try even chop you down, but it doesn't get to have you unless you allow it. That's how amazing your light is. You can't chop it down unless you choose to be chopped down. You decide... If you're going to be chopped down today, or if you're not, you don't have to be chopped down. You see? So. <clears throat> always, uh, always there's something. Uh, so I'll explain what that is here. All right, so when you kind of, you, you succumb to the suffering, right? Um, that's a choice, but it kind of is not a natural choice that we kind of become because it, there's something that's going against the grains of what is um, our soul language and what is right and wrong in the balance of all things. And so when we give into the, the disarray that enters into our life, challenges us and turns us into disarray then we become disarray we forget ourselves, and we're not really sure how to grow and be our harmony in this new disarray environment well part of the keeper of the disarray environment is a is like a little human being that lives in the mind and it's like your prison guard I, and i call it the ego okay and so the ego hates 
literally hates that I'm getting you tuned into your heart and your soul. It's like the love of all is, is the divine truth, is the harmony, and brings you back into alignment. The ego is scared right now. And when ego gets scared, it's like batting down the hatches. We got to do this, 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 this. All this fear-based thinking, all this toxicity, all this pain, all this dark truth, all this um, protection stuff. Because ego is like the chicken that got its head cut off running around and somehow still alive or something. It's like the sky is falling, absurdity. Um, so I'm shifting you back into your strength, which means that you don't need to listen to the absurd, um, you know, the sky is falling ego that's scared right now, which causes you to create an aura of pain and is causing all of this stuff to come out of the screaming mother um, across the landscape of time, that you're the mother Mary come into the, you know, the trenches of it to actually know what to go through it, but to be a benevolent and angelic spirit with an incredible um, child that is going to be born. And you're going to show them the light and the love and the radiance that they are. Do they need you to show them that? You're just going to love them. You're going to love this amazing child. And this amazing child is going to love you back. And that is the radiance. And that always was. It always will be, right? So that like me the, there's like this tug of war feeling about it when the ego gets really ragey about me coming in and helping you to find your harmony and your strength and get your ground and speak an anti-language to the fear-based ego so the love language now you're tuning into the love language again. Ego is terrified of you working with the love language because now we're not running around with the chicken with our head cut off or something. And it's gross and ugly and bloody and nasty. No, we're just in the love language now. And we're bringing ego into the love language too because nobody has to get hurt here unless they want to. But the love language is reminding you you don't have to feel like a chicken with your head cut off or feel like the sky is falling and you don't know how to fix it because the love language is in your heart and you know who you are and you are a strong and unique incredible tree of radiance that you've planted roots in the scary world and the scary world actually could use your radiance it heals people you are a healing person so your best friend is yourself and yourself is an incredible healing person that you guys got your back and together you figure out the randomizer ABCs. You figure it out. You're doing an amazing job and you won't have to do it alone because you'll have an awesome baby. And yeah, a lot of work, but it's so wonderful. The effort, it, there's so much gain to the effort because there's so much love and so much learning and there's so much playfulness. These children bring out your own inner child and it's so fun. I love watching cartoons again, listening to songs for kids. I freaking love all that stuff. And it just brings joy and happiness and light and playfulness back into your life. And it's like special. It's, it's un, unimaginably special. So when you get to step into the role of being a mother, you get to discover how special it is. And yeah, it's going to be pretty exhausting and stressful, but it's also going to be very, very special and precious. So, oh man, your, your uh, vibration around the face and the head is really hot. There's a lot of healing happening here in your perception, um, your emotional perception, your re self-reflection, um, dimensionally across the landscape of time and down the rabbit hole of the screaming mother, etc. All of this is um, kind of like relaxing here, okay? There's like a calming down and an ease about the energy right now. <laughs> You're not so shaky, like lack of sugar or something. Um, <sighs> 
We are really worn out. Muscles are really worn out. My gosh. I'm going to continue to help you here because there's a lot of, like, we're going to ease, we're going to relax, like, nurture, um, strengthen. We're going to help your physical body as well here. And I have to go through the layers. I can't just jump into the nougat. It's like, um, how many licks does it take to get to the center of the Tootsie Pop? We got to start from the outside and work our way in. And then from the inside, we expand the light. Okay. So it changes everything. So I have to honor the outside. I have to honor the shell. Ugh. Exhaustion, like super. I'm actually walking deeper into the gray area. So we've got this tree version. Um, we're, we're still the logs and the people, all that. And so we're going deeper. So we have this scene. So I'm going to walk even deeper, dimensionally deeper into the gray area as I get closer to you in the scene at the center. So there might be some dimensional spaces. There's a lot of exhaustion, um, a lot of stress. Like you're like fr freaking out here. Like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, what are we going to see next? <laughs> I'm just like, yeah, it's okay. We'll, we'll get there. <laughs> okay. <sighs> Relaxing. Relaxing everything down. Relaxing the neck, relaxing communication. This is not ex just external. It's it's like internal communication. It's dialogue with God. It's, you know, dreams. Even like says third eye communication. It's like how we are speaking, translating, expressing, learning from expressions, expressing to ourselves. All that's here. It's like so much happens here in the throat. Okay. <laughs> ah! <laughs> okay. See, your ego's got you trapped, man. We, we got to um, fear. Everybody run and scream and the sky's falling. <laughs> it, that does nothing good for anybody here. So. <sighs> I'm bringing in the ingredient of, of silence in a comforting way. Like stillness, silence, meditation doesn't have to have a picture. It's just a, a medicine, an energy medicine. So I'm just emanating what silence and peace and inner peace, meditation, all those languages that we're familiar with through the words themselves. I'm just bringing them in with the emanating the sensation of all of that. Man, is this ever sticky? It's like, it's like a drain you can't unclog. That's probably because you've been um, the screaming of the mother. Like there's a reason why I'm focusing on the throat right now. So this space is like guiding us into a throat healing space, but it's also of the muscles too. Okay. It's also of them, all the muscles, like whatever the muscles are of your head, of your, you know, like muscles that we didn't even know we had. They're like all the muscles. Okay. You don't, you don't, um, it feels like, um, the truth is, the truth is, the only truth is the, the sadness, the unimaginable sadness is the only truth. And therefore, if it's the only truth, then the anti-truth is that there's no sadness at all here. There's embrace and joy and fun and adventure. And the uh, randomizer alphabet is actually part of the adventure and the know thyself is part of the adventure and the healing of the divine feminine is part of the adventure. And so we're going against the grains of the truth is this is terrible. And how dare you tell me that it's not terrible? Like how dare you tell me so this is okay. So that's the space. That is true. It is true. How dare I tell you that this is not terrible as though I'm taking away your right um, to actually scream and to feel how terrible this is in every muscle of your body and to exhaust yourself to, into oblivion and to surround yourself with the fire of all the dead people of time 
and the rabbit hole. Like, how dare I tell you that this isn't terrible? And I believe, I, I agree that that is true. That is true. How dare I? That is true. This is terrible. This is absolutely terrible. So now we know what the lock and the key are. Well, we know it, you know, we know ego's new charade. Ego isn't just some um, mindless screaming fool. Ego is going to be like the silent voice of the devil. <laughs> because it's going to say, you deserve to be angry. You deserve to, to feel how terrible it is. You deserve to scream. You deserve to scream forever. You deserve that. That is love. That's always been love because the truth. You can't lie to yourself. How dare you think of lying to yourself? This is terrible. Do you hear the whisper of the monster encouraging you to stay in despair? It's very clever. Very clever. So you have to decide. And there's nothing wrong with taking the time out and actually feeling the, the sadness because that's part of this. It's not to be a robot. It's actually to feel sad when you need to feel sad and talk to your higher self and your guides and Mother Mary and all the beautiful beings that you love that love you back and say that today's a hard one. I'm having a really tough time with this today. There's going to be a lot of those days. That's going to be the honest truth, but it's not of the mind. It's of the soul. It's of the journey. And you're going to, it's like almost like the love and the communication and the welcoming of support and nurture is going to wash those places of sorrow and guide you back into the radiance. And you're going to have strong days and not so strong days. So this communication, it, it's like, you're right. This is really hard. This is really terrible, but um, I just feel sad right now. I don't feel the terror. I just feel really sad. And I'm changing the volume from the screaming terror that I have a right to feel and express. And to just my heart again. And that I'm just sad right now. And I, I feel confused. And I'm wanting to get back to my strength. And the way back to my strength is to know this is just today and tomorrow is tomorrow and the next day is the next day. You know, this is just the morning and then I've got the afternoon. Like we, like we have emotional shifts even from morning to night to morning again. And so you don't have to linger in them because the truth is I feel terrible. So I should feel terrible for the rest of my life. It's like, this is hard, there's no doubt. But I'm gonna keep remembering I'm a radiant tree and I'm gonna keep figuring this out is that's what I want to be and that's what I'm going to be. And then you hug this whispering devil and then you hug it and say, I love you for looking after me. And this is the only way you know how to do it best. And I know that it's about fear and the hardship of growing through this experience. And so again, now you've mended the relationship with ego. And ego is not your enemy, it's your friend. And it's just a friend who gets a little wound up and gets a little disoriented and, and then is living in their own truth, okay? So you live in the truth too. But you're also of another truth. So don't ever forget the other truth. And the other truth is the tree, the groundedness, the light, the apples of radiance that you offer to help people with. The loving relationship you can have with yourself and your newborn it is it is gonna have difficult days but this is like getting you back into alignment with the re recall and the that sensation of it's like it's not a language so much as it's a sense of memory what what is mother mary's sense of memory I mean, she lost her son to being tortured to death, for God's sakes. We never think about Mother Mary for the human being who had to go through that. And now a mother, a, a, a sonless mother, like, I reach out to her and hug her and her despair. 
Did she ever go down a rabbit hole? We don't think of her for the human despair she endured and the courage it would take to be that woman. And so she's with all women. She's all with all mothers, all females, you know? She's with us. She's a goddess. She's a mother goddess, you know? And so are you. And so that's this next gray area space, okay? A lot of energy, actually. Oh, this is so much better. A lot of energy. Um, something shifted here with that big time. Because there's no separation from the fear or even from the ego. It's just alignment and being at peace with just the process of emotion. Process of sadness. Process of the confusion. The randomizer alphabet. The process of, of having the courage to be your radiance even in hard times. That the anti-language in hard times is I'm grateful for these hard times. That's an anti-language. Because why would we ever be grateful for hard times? Because of the divine learning of this. And, and the master teachers we become by going through this. So then we become grateful for the classroom. That we could only have stumbled into if it all happened like this. Not because you made any mistakes. Or that he made any mistakes like your soul. This is all divine. You can't just have a child on accident. Everything is divine, you know. So this is divine. Wow, are you ever coming back to your center? And your muscles feel so much better. I don't feel the shakiness. You feel more like, like humanly, okay? Like you feel more like you can stand on your own two feet. There's still a lot of like acid rain is kind of the next, like I'm stepping into the next layer of the gray space. It's like acid rain. Um, like it's eating away at me. I don't feel any tugs from ego or anything. So there's a really good healthy relationship between ego, your friend who cares about you so much, loses its head sometimes. Um, your heart, your love, your soul, your radiance. There's alignment here. Man, the inhale, exhale is beautiful, okay? I'd like to get in to actually um, get to know the spirit of your child that would be really great but they're showing me that getting you into alignment with yourself is the strongest stance i could offer you today so i'm just going to be present with the acid rain i'll let it eat me alive because it needs to exist just as it is right now i it's literally eating away all the hair on my body i am i have no hair on my body and I cry tears. I look like somebody who went through um, radiation, like um, whether that was radiation therapy for like a cancer treatment or actually standing in a, a, a space that is actually has a radiation um, toxicity level. Like it's like all the hair is, um, not on my head or my arms or like, it's all, there's no hair on my body. I'm a hairless person. And there's an illness about this picture. And the acid away at range just ate it away. And there's sadness about it that I can't get back what was lost. I can't get back what was lost. And it was, it was unnatural, like some natural, unnatural thing did this to me. And it saddens me greatly. That's how your energy expresses itself here and from this picture. Okay, there's a gremlin that, that comes now and jumps on your head and actually has really long claws and stabs them into the center and opens up your head like a purse or something. And then it starts eating at your brain. And I see this gremlin becomes um, duplicates, duplicates, like echoes, like this one becomes a hundred, okay? And they're all very dangerous, but they don't, 
totally like they seem to only eat your brain okay like this one jumps on acts kind of monkey like and just like <laughs> then jumps off and smiles like um and then it's like another it, it like duplicates itself and it starts to surround you in rings and rings and rings of um echoed versions of this gremlin it only ever eats at your brain Okay, you're lying down and your brain is exposed to the elements, your hairless body, um, you're lying on like a kind of dying grass, a dying landscape. And you're like give, going to be giving birth in this scene. <clears throat> and the gremlin is all like, like watching, okay? Like, um, not like it's hungry. No, it's just like curious, if anything. And it's not even if it's curious. It seems a bit mindless. Almost like a, a mad monkey. I just, I see a, a monkey gone cuckoo. It doesn't make any sense, really. It behaves in a nonsensical way. Gremlin-y, mindless sort of monkey. Um... I don't know, it's the behaviors aren't uh, trackable. It just doesn't act trackable. Like, it doesn't add up, okay? And we don't know what this thing's capable of. And you don't want to give birth with this thing here because we don't, it's not trackable. We don't know what this thing's capable of. So I actually removed this monkey reflection and I put you in a safe and loving environment um, with nature and loving faces. And it's just you are at the center right now. You know, this message, I'm going to emphasize that this is an important detail. That it's not going to be a selfish decision to really look at what is going to make you the strongest human being, the strongest female, mother, um, representation of your strongest self that you could possibly be for the well-being of the child and the well-being of yourself because when you get strong the child is truly um like you're going the bond is going to even be more focused on the love than on the fear right which is always the goal but you're gonna have bad days it's not gonna wreck your child to have a bad day like they understand they're deeply compassionate and understanding they want to help you more than you want to want them to help you okay so that's kind of it's safe to have a bad day okay just do your very best but it keeps showing me you matter you at the center um and that you need to be surrounded around, like by people who um care about your well-being first so your well-being first it's like you need that that's like you need that so I'm not sure what your plan is when when it comes to the delivery day, um, but but make sure that you're in a, an environment that is very loving and that is very caring and attentive of your needs because labor is labor, you know. And then after you deliver the baby, you might not feel awesome. Okay, that's pretty normal because labor is labor. So you just do your very best and make sure to feel loved and nurtured and keep your focus on. What this is all about is is the adventure of a, a beautiful process of getting to be a mom in in a complex situation. But it, it keeps showing me you matter, you matter. So whatever is a gremlin-y mad monkey in the situation needs to get put way outside. Don't bring it into the situation. Put it outside of the situation because you right now you need to be working with the ingredients that make this the best recipe that help bring out the best in you. So that's what you, 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 that's not a weakness. That's just you assessing what can I cope with right now? What is gonna bring out the best in me? Um, I wanna work with that. So lean into that, relax into that. And so I see you and you're surrounded by um, very loving faces and the mad monkey is like not here, okay? And the echoes of it are not here. They try to get in. It could be, um, I mean, I'm going to let you translate what the mad monkey might represent. Um, could be thoughts even, could be a person, right? It, it's like, um, 
So now you can be your best and focus on this giving birth. It's a big process. What do you need? Okay, the next question is, what do you need in your mind um, to go from this point um, where you are standing, where you are at right now with yourself, with your pregnancy and with your home environment? Um, to what your idea of the best you can possibly work with for at delivery and then after delivery. Um, and how can you protect yourself to keep the environment um, as, as mentally high vibrational as you can? Because the focus, once this baby is going to be born, the focus is on baby, 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 baby. You're going to get really, really tired. You're not going to sleep much the first few months for sure. Um, so what, what are your needs? Like, how can you, how can you work with you to think smart here and how you can create a very safe, um, haven for yourself, your mental, emotional, physical well-being in the recovery process with the newborn? Um, what people do you want to see in that picture? Um, what people do you want helping you? Maybe you have to only help yourself. That could be the circumstance. You can do this. It's hard work, but you've got what it takes. Um, these are things that it's like you got to get solid here because we can think about how disappointing it had to come to this. Has it, has it really come to this? To let's get smart about where am I standing? How much time left till the delivery date? What are my plans for delivery during the process, after the process? Where do where am I going to be living? So these are like grounded, practical thoughts. You again are at the center because the strongest you is going to be the strongest mother you can be. And that is the most loving, um, you know, decision you can make for this newborn baby who loves you with all their heart. There's some of this stuff. Yeah, you're going to think about it, make it happen. Um, but there's going to be support that's divine too. There's going to be divine love and divine support. There's going to be family support. There's going to be support, okay? Or maybe no family support. I mean, that can happen too. So, so get prepared for this, okay? So that you can look back and say, wow, thank you, me, for thinking about me in the situation I'm in here now in the future, my present moment protecting me with this space and with this, you know, process. I'm so glad I did this for myself. So they're showing me to think like this, okay? Again, you are at the center. You are the most important right now because you are going to have to do the work to nurture the newborn baby. So you are important, very, very important. And you need to be treated as the most important. It's interesting because I hear this thought, well, isn't the baby the most important? Well, if you're a wreck... How are you going to take care of the baby that is the most important? You have to be strong to then take care of the baby to make the baby strong. So you really do matter a lot here, okay? Your well-being matters a lot here. And that's got to be number one. And the baby also is number one. But you got to be strong and be your best to be able to take care of number one, the baby. So you are kind of number one, super number one. Yeah, yeah, you, you actually are like, okay, 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 I can do this. Somehow, the, the, the whole energy, your aura, everything, is completely turned inside out. Everything we've seen thus far evaporated. And for some reason, you're standing in like a pile of gold coins. And there, it's actually raining um, gold coins. So, and it's not hurting you at all. There's even a waterfall of gold coins. And you're just standing in this. Um... So when I see, when I see money, that's abundance. Um, it could be real, um, honest financial abundance. It could be golden energy and abundance for you. Um, the wealth and abundance of love for you is pouring and raining down upon you. It's not hurting you at all. It is protecting you, keeping you safe. So this is a really solid, good image. It's like a luck card, okay? It's like good luck coin, good luck um, energy here. It's like um, I'm holding the lucky hand. Uh, this is really good energy, really, really good energy. 
So, yeah, I mean, imagine your aura now from where we started to where we're at now is waterfalls of abundance. Wealthy, loving abundance surrounding you and protecting you. It's so much more breathable in this experience, in this energy. Like, it's total faith and trust and the universe is going to provide exactly what you need for you to be your strongest self down the rabbit hole of this experience, which isn't as scary as some part of you might encourage you to see it as or feel despair about it. But get strong, get rooted and grounded in who you are and be your radiance. You've got what it takes. Everything is happening for all the right reasons. This is such a good picture. Oh, inhale and exhale this as the most comforting image ever. And to see a picture like this is really, really good. Your muscles feel good. You're not shaking. You're standing strong. You feel like yourself. You emanate yourself. You're clear-minded. You're letting the universe also surprise you with support. It, there, is a, there is support here, okay? Physical and energetic. So let Mother Mary surprise you with support. And they say, Mother Mary, okay, these are my concerns. These are my solutions. But anything I'm not thinking of, show me some reminders. Show me. Um, get me thinking outside the box here. And just, just put it out there and then see what bounces back, okay? And then trust that something is going to bounce back. And you're going to be ready. All right. <laughs> Wow, what a cool session. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're a hero. You're courageous. <sighs> Thank you so much. Thank you for sharing with us here. Thank you for letting me support you today. Thank you for letting me learn from you today. Um, I wish you all the very best. And the very best in your delivery. And the very best with your new son. I wish you all the very best in every single thing. And I wish the best for um, the father and for your family. Like I'm sending positive energy to everybody because we all need it. No matter where we are in life or who we are, whatever. Like we all need hugs and love and support for whatever we're going through. So I send love and support to every single person in your life. <sighs> Past, present, future. Just letting the love just circulate and emanate. All right. Thank you. And for those watching, if any of you are interested in exploring a session with me, you can book a session at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. All right. Have a great day, everybody.